So, a first lady, a chef, and a bunch of policy wonks walk into a bar. <laughs> okay, so we didn't really go into a bar, but we did go to Congress, and we created Let's Move. And I want to take a few minutes to back up and go to the beginning and tell you how that got started and what we hope to accomplish. Now, if you remember, about a week before the inauguration in 2009, the Obamas had moved into Blair House. And Michelle Obama invited a number of the senior women that would be going into the administration to come to Blair House just so we could get to know one another a little bit better. And when we got there that afternoon, the conversation covered a whole number of different issues. But at one point, we started to talk about the issue of food. And Michelle started to convey some of the concerns and some of the challenges she had as a mother, as a working woman, trying to make sure that her girls were getting a healthy diet. And she was concerned that they had started to gain a little bit of weight and what that would mean to their health and all of the challenges that she said her friends also had in doing the same thing. And as we started to talk about that issue, I realized that she not only talked about it with passion, but she talked about it with a great deal of knowledge. She had obviously done a lot of homework in trying to address this issue for her family. When we walked out of Blair House that afternoon, I looked at my friend Mona Sutphin, who was going on to become the Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy, and I said, you know, Mona, when we get into the White House, I hope that she takes this on as an issue, because it clearly means a great deal to her, and we know what a challenge this is for so many families across the nation. Well, fast forward a few months, and as you may remember, things aren't going too well with the economy. And the president had also decided he wanted to take on the issue of reforming the healthcare system in the United States. But at the same time, and maybe because of those issues, several of us had started to get together, East Wing and West Wing, to have informal conversations about this issue. We were genuinely just interested in this issue, and many of us were passionate about it. So you had the First Lady's domestic policy advisor, Jocelyn Fry. You had Sam Cass, who was the personal chef to the family at that time. You had Zeke Emanuel, who was a doctor, but also worked in OMB and NEC. My deputy, Heather Higginbottom, Kathleen Merrigan from the Department of Agriculture, some of her colleagues, we really just started to have conversations and ask ourselves, what is it that the federal government could do about this issue? As we started to look at it, we realized just how significant a challenge, a crisis, was before the nation. One out of three children at that time was considered to be overweight or obese. The direct costs as a result of that were $3 billion. We also realized that these weren't just uh, health-related uh, socioeconomic challenges, because for African-American girls and Latino boys and Native American youth who were the most affected by this crisis, there were also cultural and socioeconomic issues at play and intertwined with one another. We also realized that about a quarter of 17 to 24-year-olds were not fit, literally, to go into the military. We also started to understand the fact that obese children often become obese adults. And as a result of that, in 2008, Medicaid costs had risen to about $147 billion. And over 100,000 adults every year were dying as a result of obesity and, and weight-related diseases. This was a significant challenge. Fast forward again, it's February 2010, and President Obama signs a presidential memorandum establishing the White House Task Force on Childhood Obesity, and the First Lady decided to launch Let's Move. Our goal was to, in a generation, to put in place a process that in a generation would lead the childhood obesity rates to return to where they had been before this crisis had begun. So as opposed to close to 20% of our children being considered obese, we get back to the level of about 5% of our children being considered obese. 
So the task force consisted of 12 agencies and departments. We're talking about everybody from the Department of Defense to HHS, to education, to transportation, to HUD, to EPA, the list goes on and on. And the president gave us a whopping 90 days to try and come to get, get this report together to make recommendations to the government, the federal government, but also states and localities, and also ask ourselves, what could the private sector do to be a partner in this work? Let's Move was the first lady's focus, her megaphone on this issue. Because as you remember, first ladies had delved into policy issues in the past, and it hadn't always gone so well. Um, in fact, we, first ladies had received significant blowback when they decided to step into that pond. So we wanted to learn some lessons from that in doing this. First, she established the White House Garden, which now seems to be just a normal part of American life, but then it was something new. You're gonna take part of those 18 acres and turn them into a vegetable garden? Well, absolutely. And I can tell you that school children from all over DC would come and they would plant things in that garden, and they'd come back and they'd weed the garden, and they'd harvest in the garden. And some of us, and I won't name any names, Sam Cass and I, would sometimes stand in the back of the room with these kids and we get teary-eyed because you'd hear them talking about, oh, I planted the seed, and then I learned that if I nurtured the seed, something beautiful would grow, and then I realized that the same thing could happen in my community if we take care of each other. I mean, these kids were not only learning health lessons, but they were learning life lessons. And then later on to watch them dig into a bowl of cauliflower that they had grown and harvested, and they were just shoving this raw cauliflower in their mouths. We're talking about school kids liking cauliflower. So they were learning something from that. And then we established the Partnership for Healthier America, which was our effort to support a nonprofit organization outside of government that would outlast the Obama administration and would encourage and follow the commitments being made by the private sector, commitments like that being made by Walmart. Some people pushed back on that and said, oh, you know, you're lining up with corporate interests. Well, absolutely, we were lining up with some corporate interests. If, in fact, they did the kinds of things that Walmart did, which was pledge that they were going to lower the amount of salts and sugars and trans fats in the food sold in their stores, and they were also going to work with their supplier chain to do the same. When market makers like that get involved, the ripple effects are significant. And again, that outlasts, outlasts a presidential administration, and it can outlast policy, which unfortunately can be changed. We also realized that policy, however, was an important lever that we were going to have to flip. And that led us to the Healthy and Hunger-Free Kids Act that we passed, eventually, working very closely with Congress. So those hours when you can't be with your kids, when they're at school, it would mean that they were going to have greater access to healthy, nutritious meals, but also the nutrition standards were going to change for those meals. So they were getting more fresh vegetables and fruits and grains. It also meant that we were going to support those who were cooking those meals by making sure that they had better equipment and more training. Ultimately, what we were trying to do was to work with the private sector, to work with the public sector, and to do that at the federal and state and local level so that we could start to shift behavior, start to shift the way people perceive this issue, to empower people. So you can love us or you can hate us, but when you walk into a Subway or a, or a Starbucks, you look up at the menu and you go, do I want whipped cream on my latte today? You may decide that you do, that's your decision, but you also may decide, well, I had whipped cream yesterday, so tomorrow I'm not gonna do that. That's empowering people and also empowering kids because those same kids that were shoving the cauliflower in their mouths were also going home and saying, hey, this actually tastes good. And they were ambassadors to their family. I can't tell you how many people would come up to me and say, my kid would come home to me and say, you know, Michelle Obama said that I shouldn't have that to eat. And all of a sudden, parents realized that maybe this is something I can do for my entire family. Policy, the private sector, partnerships, the megaphone of the First Lady is the way that we wanted to contribute to this issue and hopefully create a healthier America. Thank you.